Welcome everyone for a quick tech announcement. The other day Microsoft released their unexpected, at least to me, Windows RM64 dev kit. And you might be wondering why do we talk here on this open source and Linux and stuff channel about this. And it looks to be quite an okay deal to be honest, uh, at least if you want to run it with open source stuff because who would want to run ARM Windows on that, right? So what it is, is an ARM-powered uh, Mac Mini kind of device, right? Intel NUC and stuff, and slim and light and so on. So that is their Windows dev kit to accelerate ARM Windows <coughs> development. <coughs> oh, probably nobody really want to use that, right? Especially for those who run Windows for backward compatibility with their x86 application and stuff. But yeah, but hear me out, Snapdragon 8, CX Gen 3 compute platform, neural processing SDK, 32 gigs of RAM, DDR4 though, 512 gigs of NVMe storage, multiple ports, Wi-Fi of course, Ethernet, 3 times USB A, 2 times USB C, mini display port, actually quite useful for 2 times 4K 60 Hz. So, but does it run Linux, right? And not fully. Um, but probably getting there, so Linux eh, starts to boot, might need some patch, probably coming soon. Share, like, subscribe, Patreon, all the good stuff if you want me to look into that. However, OpenBSD, of all things apparently, appears to be booting or so, they say here. So there is some hope, it's not like obviously Microsoft preparing that for you, but price-wise performance, right? So they post here performance, um, this user. Uh, Alex Ellis on Twitter. So performance is not that bad, right? So it's obviously not epic Apple's M1, M2 performance, but it's close, certainly better than a Raspberry Pi <coughs> of all broad, aging Broadcom Fox things. So, and that is why it's making probably quite a good open source ARM development deal, sure. Today, if you want to use it today with limited drivers and so OpenBSD. Linux, I would be confident I I could probably, like if someone sends me the stuff, Microsoft, I probably could get this to fully boot in a day or two. Um, and if you compare this to, so what, what does, it, uh, does it cost? I didn't mention that, right? Um, do they mention that there? It is in their store for 5.99. And sure, it's more than a Raspberry Pi, but you get 32 gigs of memory uh, here in the tech specs, 32 gigs of LPDDR4. That is already quite some, like if you buy a high performance DDR4 um, kit for your Epic Thread Ripping Ryzen, then that is already some hundreds. Of dollar or euro plus here the storage is of course not the largest so that is I don't know what it is 50 or something bucks so you get quite some stuff especially if you compare this to Apple and uh, I will have one more note for that so it's starting at a lousy 8 gigs also like how disconnected is Apple from reality also yes epic thread ripping performance there but like yeah 8 gigs of unified memory <laughs> <coughs> yeah um, and 256 gigs of memory and you can't even because Apple so much delayed with all their stuff and so on um, not having larger M1 Max and M2 uh, SKUs out there you can't even freaking configure that memory right and even FS SSD with uh, extreme extortion prices that Apple is pulling there you are is not even comparable, well, it's faster compute and stuff, but yeah, it also costs you 100, 1,100 plus even some more memory and stuff. So, some remarks though. So, it is kind of interesting and kind of good deal, maybe even for Windows users if you're a Windows developer. Um, for open source, sure, it's not immediately instantly but um, it might work some days or if you want to work on that and 
then in the long term um, I should remark if you want latest and greatest performance of course Apple's Mac Mini might be more for you unless also yeah like yeah who do you want to give money right do you want to give like money to Pesto Cholera like, eh, Microsoft to Apple um, Apple is have higher performance you just don't get the same memory and also the Microsoft one is probably or potentially I'm not sure if they soldered this uh, on there so I'll would probably not trust that you can use or swap this NVMe however if you have the money I mean I personally not thrilled to give either companies um, my money but the Apple thing like if you don't want to work on drivers yourself the Apple M1 M2 and stuff of course this outstanding people in the community working on Apple Silicon M1 M2 support Hector Martin um, and friends the Apple drivers will be better in the short medium and long term most likely um, so if you get this to boot again today it's not booting but if you get this to boot um, you will have probably unisolated graphics um, and probably not high profile people reverse engineering that necessarily and actually I wanted to now one thing I forgot actually I wanted to have this AMD custom APU here actually I uh, forgot the steam here of course it was, uh, yeah, the search is somehow lacking not sure what's yeah so there is that so comparing that that is actually 3000 because previously we have the steam deck here that is of course not arm but for a similar price you actually yeah the steam deck not as high performance right so it is still faster than an x86 steam deck as crazy as it is but of course comparing apples to, with oranges the fastest unfortunately as much as i hate it too although we have choice and options and stuff and also hate is relative when apple with their high performance designs is basically forcing their competition and intel and md to compete again so uh, options are always welcome apple leading the performance here at this price performance and energy efficiency level then this microsoft windows dev kit here and then steam deck but of course with the steam deck you can also run windows and x86 software which i personally never need and so yeah a new option certainly appreciated for some people memory intensive workloads that might actually be preferable over apple's mac mini that doesn't even have the memory configuration and otherwise as always leave in the comments below what you would choice uh, what you think but it is looking increasingly amazing for high performance arm devices out there i hope you find this useful especially if you're looking for high performance arm devices today and if you have any um, if you work on this stuff if you get it yourself at work or for yourself then leave in the comments below um, how the boot situation is all right and the last but not least and that is the crazy stuff right each well, like the, the normal stuff everything has pros and cons and again the apple stuff pro high profile linux and open source community people work on that um, pros of the microsoft thing it is cheaper and one thing and, and con like you don't have like high profile people maybe some and so on but there's of course a huge difference with decade known veteran people who have reversed ps3 and other stuff and and virtualized xhci for qemo and so on that hector martin has done uh, plus a lot ton of other things that is of course like 10x engineer quickly working on this stuff and other people who just get started and might reverse this stuff of course there can always be some um, veteran Linux programmer also picking up this stuff and isolating this stuff but last but not least I wanted to point out the boot situation on Apple's silicon stuff is annoying for me because they have non-standard boot procedure protocol and stuff and that is the only other benefit of this 
Microsoft Windows Dev Kit that it's using UEFI. So at least that is kind of a benefit. You don't have all of those drivers today, but at least you have a more standard. Yes, EFI sucks and stuff and ACPI and it's like, yeah, of course. But you have at least some kind of reference design hardware that you can boot generic. Well, you can boot when some bugs are fixed. What's going on here is I suspect some ACPI EFI stuff as a complexity doesn't play nicely, most likely some or either that, so either some EFI early boot stuff or AC parsing ACPI tables and, and all this stuff. But as OpenBSD uh, boots that should not be uh, po impossible. And um, so that is the long term or mid and long term benefit of having, and that is what I always criticize with all this ARM, um, small board computer stuff, SBCs and, and socks and stuff that there are no standards and everything's different, so at least you have some standard based, yes, the standard sucks, but at least standard base, based device that you can in the long term or, or, well, even today, boot alternative operating system and software. And on the Apple Silicon, you would need to have iffy payloads. I think that exists already, but you need to set up as non standard boot blessing of Apple's um, iBoot, whatever procedure there, and also deal with non-standard Wi-Fi and GPU stuff. And then potentially, if you want to boot generic iffy stuff, have an iffy um, boot payload there in M1, N1 Mini. So yeah, you can do stuff, but it's nothing like pressing some iffy button here on this device and, and having it boot into some iffy runtime to choose your boot stuff. I wish Apple would have, uh, which ironically Apple actually innovated iffy on x86 because back in that day everyone used master boot record based PC BIOS booting. Ironically, Apple with their Intel transition basically brought iffy to x86 and no. Apple being Apple having their totally non-standard iOS based SOC, embedded SOC based boot um, chain. And that is what I criticize with Apple stuff. It would be so amazing, uh, would have cost Apple nothing except their prior stuff to have an AFI based boot procedure. Um, even if it made, I mean, it would not necessarily have to make booting slower. Um, you can also implement this efficiently. But even if for software bloat reasons, booting with an AFI on Apple Silicon would be half a second or a second slower. Nobody would honestly have cared. And I would, I would have really, and probably the industry as a whole would have really preferred and appreciated kind of standard based booting um, on, on Apple Silicon, but that ship obviously has sailed. You have an option there. Leave in the comments below what you think. I hope you enjoyed this, learned something. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe and I hope to see you soon for the next tech stuff to come.